Today, I'm taking you through my process of designing and assembling a unique fruiting chamber. This method is going to combine the shotgun and the dub tub chambers with perlite in the bottom and holes uh, every few inches or so covering all four sides and the lid, which we will go ahead and make next. Here's everything you'll need to make these yourself. I scored these tubs for 99 cents each. I bought my perlite at my local nursery and while I don't have a drill, I'll be using my multi-tool to make all of these holes. I've already marked my quarter inch holes all along the bin. These ensure humidity and fresh air exchange, which is crucial for the fruiting of my mushrooms. I also have this tub of perlite, which has been soaking in water for about the past two hours to absorb all the moisture it can before I move it to the chamber. This combined tub method gives me a ton of growing space and I'm going to be using this wine shelf uh, to fit my Ziploc bags in sideways and let them fruit out like this, as well as build some sort of shelving uh, to cover the rest uh, for just other bags and projects. So we're going to go ahead and flip it over to my pre-marked holes and get them all broken through. I don't have a drill. If you did have a drill, uh, do this in reverse. Uh, so it just melts through the plastic and you don't risk shattering your bin. I'm going to go ahead and spend the next week getting this out. I will get back to y'all then. Anyway, I'm only three in and I'm going to go find a drill because this is literally going to take me forever. I'll be back shortly once I drill these all out. And we're back. We have a drill now. We have it in reverse, we're going to be gentle and let it melt through the plastic. I'll get back once it's finished. Well, we finally made it. I only made a handful of mistakes, but it should work nonetheless. I only have these attached via some screws right now, one on each side. I need to figure out some sort of hinge mechanism and a way that I can open this to inspect my mushrooms, harvest the fruit, and rotate everything in here. Uh, I need to make this easily serviceable as well so we can clean out that perlite every once in a while to prevent mold or any other contamination thriving in this environment. I think what I'm gonna do is burn some holes alongside this and use some thin wire or maybe a coat hanger to create some sort of hinge mechanism for this. I'm gonna work through this over the next few minutes and figure it out. Now, this shit broke a lot. <laughs> These bins are from 2008, and I got impatient, so I rushed a lot of the process. So ultimately, these hinges may just break through, but I'm trying to do this in the most structurally sound piece of this plastic to hope for some long-term success.
I think this is gonna work, actually. All right, cool. It opens up about all I need it to. Those hinges don't go anywhere, so now I just need to figure out some kind of prop for it. I think I'm just gonna make kind of like a hood prop, like, like you'd see on a car. I think that these guys are kind of the perfect length. And I think I can repurpose the air hole. It's already in there. I want this to catch on here somehow. So I think I'll have to put a little bend in this. Let's figure it out. And then it's gonna have to I think that works. I just need to replicate that on the other side. Comes in a little bit.
that'll be a problem. So to fix that, I'm going to All right, so we're getting somewhere. I think that I'm happy with that because opening this is not going to be something I'm going to be doing very often just when I need to access the contents within. I think this should work perfectly though. All right, now we just need to wipe everything down on the inside with isopropyl alcohol. And with the bottom now cleaned out, we can start to fill it with our hydrated perlite. We don't want this uh, to be overly wet, so I'm using this little strainer to try and get as much out as I can. I'm probably gonna have to end up adding more, but this will do for now. On one side of the bin, I'll be putting this wine rack for my Ziploc bags. And on the other side, I'll be putting this wire rack flipped upside down just to raise anything I do put in here above the bed and give them good airflow around it. With these in place, I can put in my hygrometer and we'll place this towards the front with some sticky tack underneath so I'm able to monitor the humidity levels inside of here. That pretty much wraps this up. I'm going to monitor how the humidity stays in here and adjust as needed. I may need to add more perlite or I may need to get an uh, aquarium air pump to help cycle the air in here. We're gonna move these king oysters that have struggled quite a bit from their shoebox container into this to see how it goes. I also have some lion's mane and some other projects I can move in here, but I want to make sure that it's going to work first. 
we can close it up, move it onto a shelf or a table, and clean up. And there we have it. Our chamber set up, holding a steady 87% humidity. That wraps up today's episode. I hope that you found this helpful or insightful, and if you have any ideas or suggestions for me to add to this, please let me know down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.